today I'm going to show you how to fish an isolated piece of structure, whether it be a brush pile, stumps, rock pile, that's out of the way from the bank. How to line up on it and fish it. Let's watch these clips, guys. And uh, we'll, at the end, we'll discuss a little bit. You're watching Fishing Lake Country. And my name is Dennis. Come here, come here. Oh. Y'all ain't gonna believe this, he come off in the net. <laughs> How many times you have that happen? He came off right at the net and just laid there a second, so I got a chance to grab him. But he was it. Alright. I'm gonna help you, buddy, if you stop. Look at this crap, you guys. Alright, what do y'all think? That's a nice one, isn't it? Alright. Yeah, if I was going to eat some, I'd keep him, but he's probably 12, he's probably a 12-incher. Let's right, see if I can find another one. Claim on a hair jig. I right, got another one, guys. He don't feel as big. No, nah, he's not. But we're going to, we're going to net him. Them little tiny hooks. Them little tiny hooks, you pick them up, and they just come off. Well, ain't not a bad crap on no hair jig. It got cloud on me, guys. If it's bass fishing, I caught a few bass. And it got cloudy on me. It's close to rain tomorrow. I thought, you know what? I bet he's crappy. I ought to be feeding. And let's get the old hair jig out. He's pretty. He's about 11 inches, maybe 10 and a half. Probably 10 and 5 eighths. This is a hair jig I tied myself. I figured the shark trees would be good today. Got a little bit of shark tree sparkle in it. Let's see if we can catch four or five here. All right, here's what I've done. I found the fish, okay? And you can see they're on some kind of structure right there. I'm moving my transducer. I got it right here to my, to my right here where I can, where I can move it. Up, oh, too far left. Go back right, Dennis. There, see, see the fish? See them there? Let me get you all a little closer. Now, see these bright spots? Those are fish. Now, once I, once, once I found that, Here's what I done. I got back. I'm 25 feet from it. You see, it's, it's a lot of stuff. It starts off about 10. It goes to like 25 feet. So there's 15 feet of stuff right there. All right. And from the video, it looks like it looks like it's either a root ball or a brush pile, but that doesn't matter. I look at my handle. I got my handle with my transducer. So it's right there. See what I'm saying? You don't see what I'm doing? I know I'm pointing the direction it's going to be. This is with my transducer, my handle. So when I do this, okay, I'm watching it change down there, right, right there. So here's what I'm doing. I know it's right there. I know it's 25 feet. That's where I'm throwing to. I can't see my bait that far on this live scope. I can see it when it gets close. Uh, sometimes I can see it that far if I just happen to line up just right. I said this before, I don't read a very wide width. So what I'm doing is I'm letting it sink. I know, I know from right here that they're 12 feet, 10 to 12 feet. I'm just letting it sink. It's all I'm doing, guys. Letting it sink. Now, I'm going to pull just a little bit. I didn't shake my rod. I didn't do this. I just pulled it a little bit. Now, I'm going to tell you something I've learned. I told you this before. I'm going to share with y'all as I'm learning with this live scope. I said the last video, you can learn a lot about fish behavior. Uh, I just hit it. I just hit the stump or pile of brush or whatever it is. I'm not sure what it is. All right. Now I just pulled across it. I let it fall. But I've learned a lot watching this live scope. I have, you have fish follow you back many a times. I made a video. All right. Bump. I had a bump. Bumped it again. There, got him. Got him. Live action, guys. That's what I'm doing. Now, he followed me back, guys. You notice I hadn't reeled much? He followed me back that far. And I didn't see it on the live scope. I didn't see him following me because he was out of the vision of the live scope. I don't spend all my time flipping that live scope around. I could. <laughs> but once I find the fish, I just watch. I just know where to cast. 
okay? And it's easier to find fish like that. And then you got to find out whether the crappie are, are perch. You know, once you catch one, you know, right? But perch will live right with these guys. They're, they hang out in the same places sometimes. That jig fell right out. That's why I, why I met them. All right, guys. Right. Sorry, I keep moving the camera. I'm making sure it's recording. That's a decent fish, too. He's probably... He's about 10 and 9, nine sixteenths. All right. Yeah, guys, I'm I'm a home improvement contractor. <laughs> we use 9 sixteenths and 5 eighths and all that stuff. But that's what I'm doing. I found my structure. I, it tells me right here how far back I am. It's 25 foot to the middle of it. I'm casting over there where I think it's 30 foot, letting it sink and trying to bring the bait back across the top of it. Now, that's where the live scope helps me. But also, I could go over with my death, death finder. If I put this thing on on uh, side find or down find, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, clear view, you know, which reading straight down, sonar, whatever you want to call it, I could ride over across it and throw a buoy out and do the same thing, okay? If you don't have live scope, that's what you need to do. If it's a brush pile, if it's whatever it's in, the fish are in when they're in open water like this, go go over there go cross it mark your fish drop a buoy don't drop it on top of them drop it throw it 10 feet left 10 feet right then get back 15 20 feet and you go okay there's my buoy my trash is 10 feet to the left of that where the fish is holding on so i can see the bottom i can see the bottom over there by out in front of that tree it's a shallow that drops and that's what it is it's coming out shallow it's dropping and at the bottom of that drop is whatever this whatever this is I, 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 I'm not sure by the shape of it I really can't tell uh, sometimes you get a good clear image with that it's so fuzzy it looks like it's your tiger it could be a rock pile I don't know but it's, no it's not reading I don't know it ain't green enough for a rock pile but anyway I'm not sure guys what it is but fish are relating to it you can see the dark green spots on here when I when I look at this I know I'm gonna move it guys I know it makes a little noise I'm trying not to make much noise i hate to hear it too when i edit it but see when i when i see that i know it's fish there see them see them big bright yellow spots and see one of them's hanging off the side and if you watch it you can see that moved i'm not getting a clear shot at it because i think it's because it's so deep i don't know or i'm so far from it and here's a school of sh uh, shad you see that it's a school of shad right there I'm surprised they hadn't got after them because I'm a little shad. I've been seeing big shad back in this creek I just came out of. But anyway, guys, that's what I was doing this evening. I spent a lot of time finding those fish. Gosh, guys. This is a crappie. This is a nice one. Now, y'all know, y'all think it's been two seconds between fish. It hadn't. It's been about 15, 20 minutes. And I'm going to tell you why. This is what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you right here in a minute. Let's get this fish in. I done the switch to a couple different baits. I caught the first couple on a hair jig. I've had some bites since then. I'm taking my time, guys. I don't have a four pound test. Oh, it is a nice one. Come here, baby. Come here. And that's usually where they get off, guys. Right there at the at the boat, right? Look at this one, boys. <laughs> That's what you call a slab right there, buddy. I'm gonna let you go. He's looking at me. Like, you ever notice how them little eyes roll around? I wonder how good they can see you. Gay day. Woo! Baby. The guys, I love catching crappy that size. Look how thick he is. Woo! If that don't get your blood pumping, there's something wrong with you, you know? <laughs> That's fun, isn't it, guys? All right, here you go, boy. Bye, ya. Now, guys, I caught him on pink lemonade. I think that's what this color's called. Now, the reason I switched to that, it's got a little bit of chartreuse in it. You can see the little purple and green, because it's cloudy. Chartreuse is good when it's cloudy. The hair jig I had with chartreuse, I lost it. Hey, guys. Here's what I caught some of fish on. That was a white, white and yellow hair jig I tied myself. That's the color I was using. I'm gonna show you the difference I brought this to show you. That's sharp tree. See the difference? That's yellow. Okay? I tie all colors. And what I was doing, guys, is I got downwind once I found it. Now, like I said, I fish a lot. I know where a lot of the stuff are. Our lake is full of rock piles, 
It's not. We don't have grass. We got willow grass growing on the bank. We got a few paths here and there. They're hard to find. They're scattered. Um, so in this lake, you got to fish down trees. Some of the trees have washed out in the, into the lake places. You know, flooded up the sink, rock piles. And when they built this lake, they left stumps. They left it's oodles of stumps. This lake. You get anywhere where it's shallow, you got to be very careful because <laughs> you can look over and see a stump and be set in eight, ten foot of water and the stump will be level with the surface, that type of thing. That's how, that's how bad it is on, on the upper part of the lake. you got to be very careful. Um, but anyway, I don't know what it was. I, could, I couldn't really tell. Uh, I thought maybe it was some scattered rocks. And it could be, or it could be a big stump, or it could have been a brush pile. I, I really couldn't tell that on the live scope. Some of y'all may be watching. If you could tell, let me know. I'm learning the live scope. It's new to me. Uh, and that's why I'm sharing with you uh, my live scope shots and stuff, guys. I think it's really interesting. But the point of this video is how to line up and fish something under the water like that. And what I've done was I got downwind and I kicked my boat around until I got a certain position. I stopped one time at night, I ain't where I went. I kept looking where I was at. I wanted to get to where I could cast and the wind was blowing at me so that my bait would come with the wind, okay? I move with the current. The wind current. There's a wind of current happening in the lake at this time. We have current in this lake when they release power. We make, they make power here. When they're making power here, you got to fish with the current. So it's the same way with the wind. If the wind's blowing strong at you, you better off throwing up into the wind and letting your bait come down with that wind chop on the surface. Okay? So what I've done is I lined myself up that way. I got to where I was 20 to 25 feet cast. Okay? And I lined myself up just a little, just a little bit of an angle with it, and I locked my spot lock down. And I threw this hair jig first. I don't know why. I, just, I like throwing my hair jigs once in a while, guys. This time of year, the water's trying to cool. It's 68. I threw that hair jig, and I caught two or three on the hair jig. I don't remember. But then I lost it. So I picked up my other rod, and I had the hair jig on a six and a half, a seven foot rod too. It was just a Shakespeare rod. It was a cheap rod. This is my Wally Marshall rod here. Then I went back with that. That's called pink lemonade. Why did I pick that? Because it has a light sharp trees to it. Can you see that? The water's clear, but it was cloudy. And it has purple and green in it. I wanted something with some color. I wanted something with some sharp trees because it was cloudy. Okay, there's another tip for you guys. I accidentally gave you a tip. No, this is Lake Country. My name is Dennis. Subscribe, keep up with me. I'm trying to share things with you. I hope that's interesting to you, that I find that's interesting to me. But fishing in general, guys, we learn together, we learn by base together, and we're going to grow, we're going to grow this channel, guys. See you next time on Fishing Lake Country.